Hi, and welcome to another live Google Hangout. I'm Dr. Jay Harness, Medical Director uh, here at uh, Breast Cancer Answers. You know, I'm sitting here in scrubs because I'm running in and out of the OR this morning, but one of the questions that's often asked me, uh, gee, Dr. Harness, if we're going to be doing a mastectomy and we're going to be doing reconstruction or not doing reconstruction, what am I going to look like? Well, an article came my way, I guess, a month or so ago, maybe a couple months ago now, from the Huffington Post about a wonderful guest that we have today, Marianne Angelo, who is actually north of me uh, here in Southern California. And she has developed a thing called the uh, BC Previs, meaning Breast Cancer Previsualization App. And I was fascinated by this and had an opportunity to call Marianne and chat with her about it. And I said, I know you're not ready for prime time yet, but our viewers at Breast Cancer Answers needs to know more about what you're doing. So Marianne Angelo, welcome to a live Google Hangout. Wow, thanks, Dr. Harness. Yeah, no problem. So Marianne, as a matter of background, uh, you and I chatted briefly before we went live. You are a breast cancer survivor. Why don't you share with our audience your story, okay? Okay. Well, um, two years ago, I was diagnosed with um, ductal carcinoma, and I had underwent a double mastectomy and with immediate reconstruction. And I also did a few other treatments to rid myself of the breast cancer. And during that process, I developed uh, this sort of pre-visualization technique to help me understand my expectations and not go into surgery with so much fear. And I did this for myself, and I realized, oh, why, why isn't this the norm? So that's how I came up with uh, breast cancer pre-visualization. Oh, that's a, that's a fantastic story. You know, one of the things we do now, so that I, I have a very large experience in doing nipple sparing mastectomy, so I can show patients, you know, the pictures beforehand and afterwards, but your app, I think, is going to be doing a little bit more than just that, or probably people can go to various plastic surgeons' websites and see their results. But share with our audience about how this is going to be sort of an interactive process, if you will. And technically, Mary, Marianne, how you envision this to work? Are people going to upload pictures of themselves? You know, go through it. I, I know you're not prime time yet, but go through some of your thinking about how it's going to work, and I agree with you. This could be an extremely important application. Okay, well, currently I am working with patients in, as a case study program where women who are undergoing breast cancer reconstruction contact me and, and want to be part of my program. So what they do is they send me photos based on my photo direction, and we have a long consultation about their expectations and what they believe their surgeon's expectations are. So what I do is I just bridge those two conversations into a visual representation of what the patient is expecting so that she can go into her next meeting with her surgeon and discuss her expectations. And he can, he or she can tell her if she's on target or if she's off target. But mostly in my experience with my case studies, we've been pretty pretty much 100% on target, which is exciting. Oh, that's fantastic. So hypothetically then, Marianne, somebody would have an iPad, the app on it as an example, or a droid pad. You would go through all this and the patient would walk into the plastic surgeon's office and said, hey, seen your pictures, here are my pictures, here's what I think I'm going to look like. Is that sort of how you envision this, or how's it going to actually work? Well, I give them these projections in a slideshow, and they take it in with their iPad or smart tablet, and they, you know, ask the surgeon, like, I, you know, I'd like to show you what I'm thinking I might net out like, and, and the surgeon 
you know, they include the surgeon in it, and the surgeon, you know, has a part of their vision and or understands their vision, and and they just play out this uh, slideshow, which shows the projection over time of what they can expect their body okay. to. Be. All right. Well, listen. We practiced before we went live, having you share your screen and going through your slides. So why don't we switch to that now? Christina's standing by in case you and I run into any technical difficulties. So why don't you go ahead and let's go and share your screen and let's go through your slide presentation, okay? Okay, very good. So this is the logo in progress that I developed for my app and currently developing the research and design part of the app, which the case studies really help with. This is sort of the direction for the design of the opening of the app. This is the functionality of the app. The patient would download the app and create a secure profile. And then the patient answers a questionnaire about the diagnosis and surgical options. And then this is a very important part. The patient is guided by the secure BC previous photo tool. They take images of their own body. And this is really important because what I'm learning now through my case studies is that I get all sorts of photography that may not work for pre-visualization. So the photography has to be accurate. And then I take the information and we share this platform where the patient can go back and forth to the platform to check when the pre-visualization will be ready or all their files as well. And then I upload the pre-visualization and they receive it on their smart tablet and then they take it into their uh, meeting with their reconstructive surgeon where the reconstructive surgeon can also make comments on the previs which we will also readdress. This is a video of what the slideshow looks like. It's a projection of a woman who had a unilateral mastectomy and she wanted to know what she was going to look like in the next five months while she was uh, while she was going through her expander phase and having her breast filled and then the exchange so this is sort of what I present to my patients and they're all different so they get to witness over time what their body is going to look like and also have an understanding of what the net results are now, are you a graphic design person, uh, uh, Mary Ann? So the, the, this part of your technology here is a graphic uh, design technology? Yes, I am an art director, absolutely. And I just imported this uh, technology into my own process. I brought from what I know and what my clients expect for whatever I create, I show exactly what I'm going to create, and I just implemented this into the world of breast cancer. Now, I, this is clearly fantastic. I'm thrilled to have seen uh, your video of the, the different steps and how you're doing this. Once you have your app fully up and going, Marianne, do you envision that people will contact you and you'll work with them one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, how or how? This is not going to be sort of the typical app where somebody downloads an app, puts their own photos in, and hits a button, and voila, there's the picture. It sounds like they're going to need to work with somebody like yourself uh, to go through the different steps. Is that fair? Yes. The app is a portal into the service that I provide, and it's a secured portal. And one of the things that I'm really interested in is creating a platform where women can go who are going through reconstruction and they can see these pre-visualizations and, and communicate with others who are going through the same process and talk about the reconstructive process because it's not always, people don't always have great results even if they have the best teams. There are unforeseen like infections and um, other things that that might get in the way, might get into the process, but they but this gives them an opportunity to see the process, to understand for themselves what they can expect. 
Yeah, uh, fortunately, you showed the symmetry procedure. You showed the tissue expander. That was a standard for our audience, a standard non-nipple sparing, what we call transverse incision, horizontal incision done. <clears throat> Subsequent uh, uh, reconstruction of the areola by tattooing. Some skin can then be twisted up to look like a nipple. And people may or may not have picked up it on the patient's right side, she underwent what's called a lift. And right. that's using what's called the WISE pattern to do that. And she got perfect symmetry. This is an important teaching point for our, our viewers, uh, Marianne, and that is that fortunately in the United States, we have federal legislation that mandates that women have a right to be symmetrical. And that symmetry procedures like the lift you showed in your video is fully covered by insurance. This is really important because with the normal tissue expander or even frankly with a flap reconstruction, you're going to have more of a normal forward projection. And then obviously over time, the, the, the other breast sags or the medical term for that is called ptosis. And you need to be lifted and be made whole and symmetrical. Uh, so it's real. This is a great teaching point to remind people that there is legislation that says your insurance company is going to take care of this. Um, are you working with some plastic surgeons? So uh, you're you're north of me. You're up in LA County, right? Yes, I'm in Santa Monica. There you go. Oh, oh gosh. You know, one of the real slum places of the United States, good old Santa Monica. <laughs> but you've got the John Wayne Cancer Institute there. Uh, uh, you've got others. Are you working with some plastic surgeons there as you develop the app? Um, I would like to. Absolutely. I'm open to that. And right now, I'm just currently working with patients. And I, I see that in the future, that once I finish my case studies, that the medical professionals will want to be more involved in what I'm doing and you know will, might be open to implementing this into their protocol. Well, let me just use this opportunity to tell you that just joining my practice is a woman breast surgeon who just also finished her plastic surgery fellowship at UCI. There are very few, A, women surgeons, but B, doubly boarded surgeons who actually want to do breast cancer. In other words, most plastic surgeons go on and do mainly plastic, uh, but Wendy uh, Olaya, who is my new associate, actually wants to do both. So we will work with you on this wholeheartedly, absolutely. Fantastic. I'm thrilled to see this. Fantastic. Yeah, and i got to give you a name of an old colleague there in Santa Monica. I think he's still at St. John's. His name is Jay, just like mine, J-A-Y. His last name is Oringer, Jay Oringer. And uh, Jay, I think, is still in practice there. He's a Michigan guy, just like me. And you can call his office and invoke my name and say, Dr. Harness wants you to, you know, I want to meet with you and show you this app I'm working on. Uh, and I hopefully he'll he'll be as excited as I am about this, uh, Marianne. How, my goodness gracious, woman! How are you funding all of this? For crying out loud! Oh well, that's the other part of the equation. Right now, I do it for free, and I believe that this should be a, a tool that is free for women going through reconstructive breast cancer. So right now, I'm looking for corporate sponsorship and definitely partners and other partnerships and, co and a co-founder to help me bring this into its form. Well, it, it ends up that when it comes to the tissue expander companies and the implant companies, two of the biggest in the world are right here in Southern California. Wow. And so we need to talk about how we may get them involved in supporting something like this as well. You may also want to set up a small foundation since you're going to provide this for free to people. Uh, uh, the corporations generally have a easier time in giving money to 501c3s than, than they do others. But we'll talk about this. I just have to, so your background, so A, you're a breast cancer survivor and you look fabulous. Thank and you. B, 
but tell us more about your education and other background. I mean, do you, before the world of breast cancer, what were you doing, Marianne? I was working in advertising and raising my daughter and making commercials and okay. I'm very busy. Okay, um, and, and you knew how to do computer design and all of that stuff as well? Oh yeah, I'm very well versed. <laughs> in that. And I'm also an architect, so okay. I have a lot of visual skills. And this just seemed right, and it seemed appropriate. And and there's no reason why this can't be implemented in the world of breast cancer and even beyond. Listen, I I'm thrilled that we got you on to do this live Google Hangout. Uh, Santa, come on, uh, all I got to do is run up to 405 to be with you. We're going to get you down here to visit with me, see if that rascal Jay Oringer is around, and we'll talk to you since I believe his practice is right there in Santa Monica. Any final thoughts you want to share with our audience? I'm as excited as I can be about your app and what you're trying to do here. Thanks, Jay. It really touches me when breast surgeons and reconstructive surgeons want to get behind something that is so helpful for women and will bring great value to their experience and and that's all I care about I it's a tremendous reward for me to help women and as I go through my case studies I can't tell you how beautiful of an experience it is it's very heartwarming for these women to have someone who's gone through it to talk to them and talk them through it and help them and for me that's everything well, I have to tell you, if you go to my personal website, the Dr. J. Harness, drjyharness.com, you'll find an expression on there. In fact, it's trademark. It's called emotional reconstruction. My dear friend Steve Cranford, who designed my website a few years ago, actually coined that. And he did that based upon interviewing my patients after, you know, meeting and working with me. That what happens, Marianne, when we embrace patients like this? we begin the process of emotional reconstruction. Your tool, your app, in my view, uh, is going to be key to that. And frankly, not only for a mastectomy, but in those women who are having lumpectomies. Uh, frankly, uh, one of my favorite, if there is such a thing, favorite operations is using that wise pattern lift reduction combined with a lumpectomy. So not only do you get a nice lumpectomy, but the bonus is you get lifted and, and probably reduced. These are typically oh, double D cup size, lots of drooping or ptosis. And, and I mean, these patients say, oh, my goodness gracious, I feel like I've been reborn. Well, your app is going to fit perfectly right into my philosophy, which is we need to begin the process of emotional reconstruction as soon as we begin to engage with patients. So I want to wholeheartedly congratulate you for your work so far. I, I just eagerly look forward to working with you. Oh. And any, any other final, final thoughts before we sign off? Um, I can't think of anything right now. I think we've covered a lot. Yeah, we have. <laughs> well, listen, as we say here at Breast Cancer Answers, it's been a privilege for us to share our time with you. Have a great week. Stay tuned for future live Google Hangouts. Dr. Jay Harna saying, have a great day. Hi, I'm Wendy Hartley, co-founder of Breast Cancer Answers. You know, not every breast cancer patient benefits from chemotherapy. When I was diagnosed, my doctor thought I would need chemotherapy. But then I learned about the Oncotype DX test, which helps your doctor decide if chemotherapy could benefit you based on the unique biology of your tumor. My test results revealed I had a very low chance of my cancer returning, which meant I didn't need chemotherapy after all. To learn more about the Oncotype DX test, click this button here.